We're doing some uh, Alaska overlanding. All right, we are somewhere in the backwoods near Kinch's house in Alaska. Is that a delta? No idea where we're at. She'll be back. Ouch. All right, so we are going back here to, what is this, Kinch, Fairy Rocks? I call it Fairy Rocks, it has no name. But, uh, Fairy Rocks. Dogs are having a good time eating bison poop. I'm kind of getting flashbacks from when we were kids when Kinch would say, don't worry, I know a shortcut. And then eight hours later, we scramble out of the woods after we got lost. Kinch, are you sure you know where you're going? Oh, I don't have to. We're walking over to the trail. The animals know where we're going. I think the dogs know where we're going. So, uh, Mom, how confident are you in Kinch's uh, directions here? I was following the dogs. I'm just following the animals. I have no idea where we're going, but uh, the moose and bison do. And uh, there's a drop off to water, and uh, they, they pass by this. Uh, Hopefully you don't go through like a time rift or something and then, you know, end up in the missing persons report in Delta Junction. Delving deeper into the woods. As you can see, Rainbow is having a fantastic time. On the upside, this is a absolutely beautiful forest. Here comes Piper. Rainbow looks super excited. Kinch said we're here. No, take the shortcut. I don't know if we're walking back where we were, but it's thick back here. And you know how it is when you follow following Kinch, it's always an adventure. Sometimes it's an adventure you want, sometimes it's an adventure you don't. You just never know. Ah, oh, I should have started my watch, then we can track where we're going so we don't have to rely on Kinch on the way back. Well, I just now did. What? Nothing! We have full confidence in you knowing where you're going. I ain't scared of nothing. I'm just worried we'll be spending the night in the mosquito infested woods. Look at these trees, Mom. Look at rambling grandma rambling through the woods. Hey, we found caribou poop. That's a good sign. Piper! So, so I climb up here this model of And it has been known yet because of cheese. Oh. In like the early 1900s, the uh, USGS did put a marker. So there is a marker. So apparently we're going to a monolithic structure. Flatland, flatland, flatland. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, there's something geologically that should not exist. Go ahead. This rock? Hold on. It's, it's pretty cool. This was not left. This was forced out of the earth for some particular reason. Mom, need a hand? She's a strong, independent woman. And she don't need her sons. <laughs> <laughs> this right here, that's where we get our strength from, right here. That woman right there. Look, it's a wild Alaskan orangutan. They know how to use firearms, and they walk around in board shorts year-round. Not gonna lie, this is a cool little spot. All right, we're gonna witness mom living dangerously by crawling into the little cave. Mom, this is how uh, people in Alaska disappear. That's a mean thing to call your mother. <laughs> and of course, mom is going to uh, do the hard way, as you, you can clearly see. Yeah, huh? But uh, we'll follow her up that way. Look, she's like a mountain goat. Sure footed <laughs> as a mountain goat. Look at her go. Look at her go. That woman is so crazy. Little cave here. I've been here a hundred times. I've sat here. 
right here. And I've hung out right here. I've never seen that. See what? You're about to see. If it's what I think it is, I can't, I can't believe it. We've came up top here. Look at this. We're, we're not going to touch it. Debbie's going to come up here and see it. It might not be. It could be a whole lot of nothing, okay? All right. I don't know if Kent's just being dramatic or not, but... Well, I mean, <laughs> we'll we did archaeology. Rainbow. Josh. Apparently, oh, he's, he's seen something he's never seen before. Oh, my gosh. Okay, this isn't going to be important to you. You're not going to give a shit. I don't even know what you're making a big deal out of. This here is a core. I don't want to touch it. This is a core. What a core is, this is chert. This doesn't exist here. Like, or a, a form of Alaska chert. This does not exist here. I've been, I've sat right there. I've looked around. You know, I've drank water because it was cool on this shady side. And I just was walking down to where I usually go. And I look. So imagine where Josh is sitting right here. There's a native. And he's sitting here and uh, he's flaking off this. He's using this stone to flake off this core that's grown into the moss here. This is not a rock that they bring them up from the uh, coast. So I don't want to touch it until Debbie comes down here because we want to like photograph it. But he would be taking this and taking little tiny micro blades off and then they would take a bone and they would laminate the micro bones because you know you can't make a whole lithic with some of this uh, this uh, not as high quality churn. So you, uh, it's almost like a serrated knife with, uh, with little tiny sh uh, sharp pieces through it. Uh, and that's exactly what this is. You can see where they knock it down this way. This is a core. So what, what's special about it being here? Um, it shows, now, I know that natives have used this. This was important, you know, because they would work from, like from here you can see uh, Donley Dome. From okay. Donley Dome you can see here, from here, there you can see, so they would go. So they'd also climb up here to get from away from the mosquitoes at the bottom. What's, what's so cool about this is to think exactly where Josh is standing on this little nub here. There was a native sitting here hundreds or thousands of years ago, making a tool that fed his entire family. And this here is his material to work with. Now this itself is not a tool. This is a core where he would knock it off in all directions and cores usually come to a point where he's knocking micro blades off. So what makes it so cool is we know natives were here, you know, uh, in this area. We don't know much about them because the landscape changes so much, right? And you know, when you're out in the fields and stuff, you have to dig things up. This is what's significant. Usually you have to dig up a site. It is literally not just left and protected in a little alcove like this. This is literally what he's using to knock it off, and this is the actual core, which created tools which fed an indigenous people before Europeans made it to Alaska. The dude was sitting where you're standing, right? And he is making tools while he's waiting for, like looking down and waiting for animals. I don't know. I'm sorry I worked that out. To me, it was a big deal because I did like five years of archaeology, and you never see that, ever. No, I'm not gonna lie, that's pretty interesting. I want to look at every single alcove and see what somebody left behind. Hey, right, we are about at the top of this thing. Feel like Rainbow has found the top of this thing before I did. It's so cool, though. Oh, it's real cool. It's a cool rock formation. So out here, those are the granites. The Alaska Range is on the other side of that mound. There's Rainbow. There's, uh, there's Mom. So clearly there's a lot of history here that I unfortunately don't know much about, but Kinch is the expert. I'm not an expert, but I did some archeology. span So if you look at the path that Josh is walking on, that was not created by people whatsoever. That is created by coyotes. So, coyotes coming to the top of this, they're setting their uh, territory. And if you'll see, this is a territory marker. You can see that the rabbit teeth and bones and stuff in it. They come up here and typically, they'll poop and pee on top of this rock. You can see where the urine has marked it. And this is basically, you know, like a coyote tagging this. Typically in places, they'll go to the tippy top. But on this specific trail, they're using this to hunt ermine. They're using it to hunt... Uh, uh, marmot and uh, you know s smaller mammals but this here with all the bones you can kind of tell what they're eating based on like you know the little bones that are coming out of the dry poop like that would have been a small rabbit or squirrel uh, right here so right here where it's bleached is where they spray and if a new stronger 
uh, pack of coyotes come in, they'll claim this, but this is prime coyote territory. And if we were to come out here at night, they'll actually walk back over and respray anything our dogs have come on, and they'll actually cry out and scream and pee on stuff and reestablish territory. The only reason they're not attacking our dogs and harassing our dogs at, is that they're afraid of primates like us. Pick some Alaskan cranberry. Huh. That's real tart. Real tart. So being out here in the woods with Kench evokes a lot of nostalgia from the many adventures we used to go on as kids back in the field behind the house. Went through the woods, walking to the river, taking detours, forging our own path. It was a lot of fun. All right, I'm gonna go embark on my own adventure to the top up here. Kench and Mom are gonna traverse around the side to a little cave. We'll meet up on the other side. There's Rainbow and Piper. What you think, Rainbow? They know where they're going, I don't. There's Kench and Mom. Rainbow! I have found the cave. You comfortable? Oh, it does feel nice in here. Look, Mom, you made it to the top. Yeah, this is a really cool part of the forest. All right, we are almost back to the truck. The dogs went the way we came in. Kent just taking us a different way because he said it's easier. We'll see about that. Mom, go ahead. What's one trail instead of jumping several trails? Says Kench. All right, our adventure is at an end. We have made it back to the truck. Thank you, Kench, for the fun adventure. Mom didn't get into too much trouble this time. But there's always tomorrow. This is unbelievably beautiful. Look at this. This is amazing. <laughs>